I'm Ryan Phelps and today we're going to look at finding areas under the standard normal distribution. To begin, we're going to start with the most simple case using Excel, which is a probability less than a z-score. The formula used there is norm.s, s is for standard distribution. In the parentheses, you will put in your z-score and true for cumulative. We'll also look at the probability that uh, under the standard normal distribution that falls above a z-score, which is simply one minus the area that we found previously. Uh, we'll look at the probability that z falls between two z-scores, which is just a combination of two norm.s.dist functions. Um, and finally, we'll look for the probability that z falls outside two z-scores, which is simply the rest of the area after excluding the probability between two z-scores. We'll do all of this using Excel, but importantly we'll draw pictures of the areas that we're looking for first. So what we're going to be working on here is finding areas under the standard normal curve or probability values, same thing, associated with z-values. So to begin, let's set up the framework. The best way to navigate these problems is to have an image that you're working with. We will draw pictures associated with certain probabilities and then we'll find those using Excel. You can also use the table if you're more comfortable. The image that we'll be working with is the probability distribution of the standard normal variable z. So we will have the relative frequency of z on the vertical axis and the values that z takes on on the horizontal axis. Um, you want to remember that z is distributed normally means zero. So the center of the distribution of z is zero. Also, like any probability distribution, the entire area under the curve is equal to one. So this area over here, all of this region here, is equal to 0.5 or half of the area under the standard normal curve. Also, the area on the other side of zero is equal to 0.5. So the mean of z is zero. z is symmetric about zero, meaning we have half of the area to the left of zero and half of the area to the right of zero. So we would say, for instance, that the probability that z is less than equal to zero equals 0.5. That's the simplest probability that we will look up and that probability again is right over here. You may guess that this probability is equal to the probability that z is greater than equal to zero which is also equal to 0.5. Now, further building our intuition, it's good to understand that almost all of the probability under the standard normal distribution is exhausted between positive 3 and negative 3. We will use this intuition and our images moving forward to try to understand the standard normal distribution and how to find areas under the curve. So we're going to use this Excel template in order to find areas under the standard normal distribution. We'll expand beyond that in later videos, um, but to begin, in terms of formatting, I've used green here to indicate that we are going to be inputting information into those cells and also I've used purple in order to indicate that the, um, the cell is a result or a calculation. We're going to begin by looking at how to find probabilities under the standard normal curve using one z-score. We will put our z-score in this cell here. And the first probability we're going to learn how to find is the probability that z is less than some z-score. In Excel, if you type equals and start typing norm, uh, you'll see several options. 
The one that we are interested in is norm.s.dist. This is going to return areas under the standard normal distribution for a certain Z score. If we double click on that, it's asking us for Z. We're going to use this cell uh, to put Z into and using a comma then um, true will return the cumulative distribution function or it will return the area to the left under the standard normal distribution for the Z value we put in. And so we can double click on that or type true, close the parentheses and hit enter. So we can see here there's no value, which is the same as zero. The area to the left of zero under the standard normal distribution is equal to 0.5 or 50% or half of the area under the standard normal curve. We learned that the probability z was less than zero. All of this region here is 0.5. What if we want to know what the probability that z is less than or equal to some other number is? Let's pick a number. Suppose we're looking for the probability that z is less than or equal to 1. How do we find that? The first thing that I like to do is to draw a picture, and that picture is going to be a visual representation of this probability. So in order to do that, we need to put our z value or z score on the graph. And that's easy enough to do. One, one, two, three. Again, we exhaust about all of our probability at a z value of 3. We will go straight up from 1. And then the probability that z is less than 1 is going to equal all of the area to the left of 1 under the standard normal curve. So once again, this probability statement, which will have a result, is going to equal this area or this percent of 1, where 1 is the entire area under the curve. Now we remember from last time once again that this area right here, the area to the left of 0 is 0.5, so we know we're looking at a number larger than 0.5, but what is it? Well, Excel will give us a quick answer. Now that we have our template set up, it's a simple thing to change the Z value that we're using by typing in 1 and enter. It will calculate the new probability for us. In this case, the probability that z is less than 1 is 0.8413 or 84.13%. Using this Excel sheet, we can also find the probability that z is greater than z score. If we know that the area under the entire probability distribution is 1, and the probability that z is less than, for example, a z-score of 1 is 0.8413, then the probability that z falls to the right of 1 is going to equal 1 minus the probability that z falls to the left of that z-score. So the probability that z is greater than 1 is 15.87% or 0.1587. We could also try a different number. We know from before that a z-score of 3 is extreme and indeed almost all of the probability falls to the left of 3 and almost none of the probability falls to the right of 3. Highlighting both of these and using the auto sum function at the bottom we can see that these results add up to 1 or the whole area under the standard normal distribution, and indeed they always will. So we've seen that the probability that z is less than 1 is equal to 0.8413 or 84.13% what is the probability that z is greater than 1 and what does that look like graphically? So the probability 
that z is greater than or equal to 1 is going to equal, as we saw in Excel, it's going to be 1 minus norm.s.dist. Um, or, graphically speaking, if we take 1 again and plug it in, this time we're looking for the area to the right, so I will shade all of that in, and as we can see, this is going to make up the rest of the area under the curb or it's going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that z is less than equal to 1, which is going to equal, as we saw in Excel, 0.1587, which is equal to 15.8. 8, 7 percent.